All right, we're back with Brian Spangler at Apisa Shoals making dough. John Arena uh, comfortably uh, in his in his own place, uh, but getting ready for another another session at his uh, pizzeria, Metro Pizza in uh, Las Vegas. Uh, Brian, when we broke, you were uh, just finishing the first the first two parts of the mix. You've gone forward, backward, and we're just starting the final four minutes of slow speed mixing. Uh, where are we at now? Uh, right now, we did uh, four minutes in first going forward, one minute in reverse to bring everything that could potentially be dry, needs to be incorporated back up, um, and then we went back into first for five minutes. Oh, so uh, 10 minutes total mixing. So that's nine minutes total mixing at this point. Now we're going to let it relax because it's very tight. We want it to be relaxed when we do the window pane test so we get a really accurate uh, idea of where it's at. And then we'll probably turn it on for uh, once it relaxes and, and get an idea, turn it on for another 15 to 30 seconds in first, just to kind of almost do, almost like doing a stretch and fold, um, just to bring it, where are we and where are we gonna go? And right now you can see all these tubs behind me. So these are all, we have got five tubs that we're gonna yeah. dump the dough into. And then over the course of the next uh, four hours, we're going to be doing stretch and folds every 45 minutes to slowly, we're looking for like a, a, it's kind of between a short mix and an improved mix because with the, the four stretch and folds, you'll definitely get a lot of strength and development out of that. But we're trying to slowly, because of our uh, restrictions on uh, refrigeration and what we're trying to not only get the dough ready at opening, but also you don't want to overdevelop it because we wanted to <clears throat> we've got a four and a half five hour window we want that dough to be as optimum as possible so it's kind of a we're walking a tire you know what, what, what what's the old saying you're, you're walking a, a tight wire tight rope yeah tight rope yeah so it's it's kind of a dance that we're, can, we're doing can you on show us a small piece of that though we looked at it before the break and we saw yeah. that it was it was a, it was almost developed but not quite let's see after another five minutes of mixing how much further developed it is. And then I'm we'll holding a laptop while I do this. So this is. Oh my God. Sorry about that. And then when, <laughs> and then when we, and then when we get it, uh, give it its final little uh, gentle mix at the end, we can look again and see how different it is from the way it is right now. So you can see it's starting to relax a little bit. I'm trying to get the, starting to relax a bit. Yeah. Um, if Andres, he went into the walk-in, when he comes back, I can do a little. Yeah, we'll get him to hold the camera or something. But uh, how, soon, how soon before you have to put it into its 20-second uh, uh, gentle mix? Well, we, we let it sit, sit for about 15, 20 minutes just to relax enough so we can then do a, a reel. Because when, when, when it's just been mixed, it's tight, right? Like every time you do a stretch and fold, every time like you fold it back in on itself, it, 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 it tightens up again. You, you want it to be relaxed to really it to tell you exactly where it's at. Yeah. If you're trying to judge it when it's tight, then yeah, it's, it's you're going to get false readings. So well, then, while we're waiting for all that to happen, let me ask you this. Um, how many hours before you s do you start dividing and balling it up? Okay. So um, this is basically going to be, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna test it here in about five minutes. Uh, we're going to start scaling this out uh, and, and balling it up in four hours. Four hours. So it's going to be a four-hour bulk fermentation after it's been divided into smaller units in the in the yeah. tubs, and then, well, and that, then brings up, that brings up a good point. Um, is that uh, depending on your what I got, what I call? Uh, oh, hey, I'm good. Um, <laughs> he's like walking away. <laughs> Camera shy. <laughs> Um, is that uh, you have mass effect, right? So uh, if we kept this all in like one soup, like really big mass, then it would it would ferment much faster because when you when you break it down into smaller portions, it, it, the rate of fermentation changes with yeah. the mass effect, and that's something that a lot of people don't talk about. Yeah, because so because it's it's uh, it's cooling. You cool it down a little bit, and it doesn't build up as much internal heat. Uh, well, it's like, it's like taking a huge, remember blocks of ice, you just have to grab an ice pick and, ch you know, chip up, my grandfather yeah. used to buy. Yeah. Um, that's, that, that takes a long time 
to cool down or freeze, but it also takes a really long time for it to melt and vice versa. So when you start dealing with dough, uh, depending on your production schedule, you want to be aware of mass effect and how it's going to affect your fermentation rate. Because small portions are really affected by ambient air temperature. Large portions are, you can't cool it down fast enough because it's all, like, there's energy that's being produced during the fermentation. Uh, there's heat being generated from the fermentation. So right. by breaking them up into smaller portions, you're, you have more control of it. Um, overall well now your method we're seeing how your method is and john has a, a, a whole different setup because he's got refrigeration and everything john could you take walk us through a little bit of how your technique and your method and approach differs from the way brian's doing it okay, so so once my mix is completed i bench rest the dough for about 20 minutes divide it round it let it rest for another 15 minutes and then put it in the cooler yep for five days in uh in tubs about the same size as the tub right, there's no bulk fermentation there's it's it, it right in the right in the cooler, but it really is fermenting, but just at a much slower rate, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. He's, but he's got like shallow dough tubs that he's shallow tubs. shallower tubs than Brian. So so you've got a whole different dynamic going on in terms of the relationship of time, temperature, and ingredients than Brian does. Of course. Yeah. So so we're both, we're both getting to the, we're both we're getting, we're getting to the same place, but I'm, the, uh, I'm taking advantage of my my uh, the space that I have available and utilizing that to make my production and my dough management a lot, a lot simpler. Right. So I don't have as much pulling out, pulling in. My dough come, it goes in the cooler, it stays there for five days. It comes out about an hour before it's gonna be used and then it's used. So you've got enough space at, at, at your operation to have five days worth of doughs at different stages exactly. rising. Yes. That's a nice luxury. Uh, but you're also producing uh, on a daily basis probably more pizzas at your operation than Brian is in, in Portland at his, correct? Um, you know, typical location be 500 pizzas. And Brian, you're doing about 150 pizzas. So that's, uh, you know, so you're different scale. So, which is, uh, now, now we're, Brian's showing us the, the dough. He's stretching it out to give us a window pane effect you, you to show the seeing, strength of that gluten. You start seeing how it starts breaking cleanly but we're yeah. still, I don't have light shining behind this. It's still fairly, I don't know, it's got, it's kind of veiny for lack uh -huh. of a better description, but you start seeing that the, the, the breaks are getting cleaner. So this is like what I call, it's in between a, a short mix and an improved mix. Yeah. Those are baker's terms, gonna, by the way, for people who don't it, know that. Yeah. We're going to give it five stretch and folds. Sorry. And that, that completes the gluten development too, each time. It, right. It, 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 so you're still going to give it the uh, 20 to 30 second uh, slow mix. So we're gonna, right now we're going to give it. What do you think, Andres? 30 seconds. 30 seconds and first. 30 seconds. A gentle. A gentle. So uh, that'll be kind of like stretch and fold number one, but done by the machine. Yeah, I don't know if you can see how kind of like it's still a little shaggy. Uh -huh. It's been resting now almost 20 minutes, uh, thereabouts. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to put it in first. Watch what happens after we put it in first for. Just uh, 30 seconds. I, that to me is a really dramatic thing because when people do stretch and folds on in small batches, like on their countertops, they can see that very clearly how after even one stretch and fold, the dough dramatically changes. And so we're going to probably see that. This is, this will count as your stretch and fold number one, just done mechanically. And then all the, the subsequent ones will all be done by hand, correct? Well, be before the Industrial Revolution, this is how it was done. Like when people did it by hand, they didn't kill themselves trying to like fully develop dough by hand. They gave, you know, they realized quickly and identified, look how shiny that is now. Yeah, it's completely, it's tightened up and it's, uh, and it's, it is. It's, can you, can you do a little uh, window pane on that piece of dough? I can, it's a little harder because now it's been uh, developed, right? We folded in on itself, so it's, it's stronger. But yeah, let me uh, have Andres hold this for one quick second. See how tenacious it is now? It's like. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's kind of resisting now, huh? Well, yeah, because it's been it's it's been folded back in on itself. It's it's getting that, that development, so it's gonna be it's a uh, it's tight. It's not relaxed. So so that's so now uh, is it at stage now where you're gonna actually start taking it out of the mixer and taking it to the to the tubs? Can we see this? I'm trying to put a flashlight behind it so we can start seeing. Yeah, it's very translucent. It's letting the light shine through. But it's still it's still veiny. It's uh, 
You can see the, the veins there's, is like there's, the glue. There's strand. a description I could use right now, but I'm not going to use it. <laughs> it looks like something. Well, I. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I know. We got know, the con it's the condom effect. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, but you see how it's it's a little it's 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 still choppy. Like there's a good. Is, can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. So it's still choppy. It's not fully developed. The 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 breaks are starting to come clean. Yeah. So we're getting the development, and then with the four stretch and folds over the next four hours, we're going to get a lot more development, but not overdevelop it. It's still going to be very loose. It's still going to be um, looking for that open, airy crumb, and it slows down the fermentation rate so that. Right. So the next step for this you dough. You get as much flavor by slowing down that fermentation rate over an ambient um, and also slows down for that that four and a half to five hour production window of yeah. it being a, kind of a safety net or having the tolerance, the fermentation tolerance. You probably want me back in the kitchen. Hold on. Well, no, I just, want, you guys I just want to know if you're going to, you're going to take it from the mixer now, you're going to move it to the bench and then you're going to divide it into smaller units or right now it's going right from the mixer to yep. the tubs. It looks like into the tubs. Uh, and so yeah, so, we're out on the, grabbing wait, all the dough out of the, the mixer. And the next stretch and fold will be in one hour? Uh, the first one will be in 45 minutes. 45 minutes. So, and each time you do that, you're not only degassing the dough, but you're also strengthening that, uh, that, that structural integrity. Yeah, so it's like taffy. The best, the best uh, way to describe it to people what stretch and folds are is like when you know, taffy needs to be folded in on itself over and over and over and over again for right. it to get that nice smooth sheen, right? Also um, kind of like, uh, like Damascus steel when they keep uh, pounding out the steel and folding it over and pounding it again and folding it. It kind right. of, it, it's, it smooths it out and strengthens it. Or you um, know, take, taking a piece of gum out of a baseball card pack, you know, you can't right. fill trouble with that shit. But you know, <laughs> once you once you keep chewing it and, and fold, you know, it's, yeah, it's basically yeah. by chewing it, you're folding it in on itself and starting to develop it. Then it has the then it has the uh, ability to trap gas, right? So so what you're doing um, in a in a one hour, in a one day window, so to speak, because you're going to use this dough today, John, in your situation. You don't do all those stretch and folds throughout, or do you, uh, to strengthen your dough? No. You just simply get it in the tub and then let time and temperature do the work. Exactly. So if you can afford to get the setup that John has, you don't have to do all the steps that Brian's doing, right? Yeah. But, <laughs> but we're, you know, biologically, chemically, we're probably we're achieving the same thing. Correct. We're just doing it with, through a different method. And that's why it's so important to understand the principles. But I do have a question for you guys that's asked, asking me a lot about the stretch and fold. Yeah. A lot of discussion lately about how about the fact that stretch and fold may improve flavor, because we're taking the bacteria that's settled on the exterior of the dough and incorporating it into the, into the mass and you stretch and fold. You guys have any feelings about that? Yeah, I do. Um, so if you're doing what I'm doing, so the reason we do the stretch and fold and get it to just that low development is we're trying to extend out the fermentation to get all that lactobacterial fermentation you intrinsically achieve over the five days in the walk-in. Um, I'm on a 24 hour window, so I need to extend this out, pre-ferment just enough, extend out the fermentation long enough in the bulk and get to that, that level of getting all those compound flavors, uh, which affect not only the flavor, but also affect texture, because acids reinforce the gluten bonds. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it, this is the hardest part about teaching people is like, knowing what your physical space is, what your, what your limitations are, or, or lack thereof, and then what you're looking to do in a production scale, it's, it's, every action has a reaction and there's a solution for all of it. Like there's nothing that scares me. Um, well, uh, that, the way being, I would also being without has taught me more than having, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because you've got to, you've had to make it work with the, with the conditions that you have. Me, and, and, the, and the way I would respond to John's question is that it, it's a different, a different functionality 
in, in Brian's case, a lot of the functionality of the stretch and folds is to even out the temperature of the dough and to strengthen the gluten bonds. Whereas the bacterial issue that you brought up, John, which is how the lactobacillus organisms can create more, more complex flavors, uh, I, don't, I think that's gonna be more of a factor in your long five day process because the bacteria takes a lot of time, especially at cooler temperatures. So as you, if you were to stretch and fold, you might be able to not only strengthen the, the gluten, which is already happening just by sitting, but you can also possibly um, uh, bring some of the surface bacteria into the center so it can help to flavor the dough evenly. And so I would suggest if, 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 uh, if you wanna try this, I'd love to hear the results, is, is take a dough tub out each day uh, from each day's process and do one of them, dedicate one of them to a stretch and fold each day during the five days and see if you notice a flavor difference. It might be very, very subtle, very slight, or maybe not at all compared to the ones that just sit there for five days and don't get the stretch and folds to see if you get any kind of a, um, a little bit of a more complex or tangy quality from uh, as a result of that bacterial uh, folding. But there's no, there's, and that's all very, I think it's gotta be, it probably could be scientifically, you know, uh, uh, calculated, but I think more or less it's gonna be more of a subjective uh, test to figure that out. I don't think it's really gonna affect that. I mean, the time is what, in my opinion, in my experience affects all that stuff. Uh, the German master bakers believe that even if you do uh, pre-ferment for over 14 hours, you're already starting to awaken the natural uh, organic live yeast. Um, and that starts getting into the lactobacterial. So <clears throat> what I'm doing and what John's doing, I think we're already there. I think anybody who wants to tell me that, you know, commercial yeast is bad and that, you know, only natural leavening is the way to go. And most of those people don't even know how to control natural, you know, sourdough cultures. Um, they're wrong. I think, I think there's nothing wrong with what we do. It was, it's evoking the flavor of the wheat and, uh, all the organic chemistry that goes along with natural fermentation, whether it be a commercially propagated product or not. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's the intent and the knowledge basic and the attentiveness that gives you the upper hand, not some buzzword or the new hot fucking thing. <laughs> there you go. What is that? It's a uh, Underberg. Is that, is that like an like a energy drink? It's uh, it's a uh, it's it's bitter. It's from Germany. So, it's oh, a little so bitter. Bitter. After okay. after basically the the, the the their old tagline from them was after after a good meal. But it's uh, I like bitters a lot. Uh, it helps my digestion. Yeah, and, um, it's a great digestive. Well, right. listen, this is a great place. You brought up you brought up a subject that I think we should let spend a whole session on, which is uh, natural fermentation versus uh, by natural we mean. Uh, natural sourdough starters versus commercial yeast fermentation and any kind of hybrids therein. So maybe let's save that for uh, the next time we get together because we've covered a lot today in this in this round. Um, and uh, maybe we can get somebody to join us uh, on the, when we talk about this who is working with primarily naturally leavened pizza doughs and see if we can do some compare and contrast on that. We better have somebody knowledgeable. I'm going to get fucking mad. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll, we'll try to we'll, we'll do our best to try to find to like, put it that way. But most people, you know, Peter, you and I have been in this business a long time, and um, I'm finding that most people, like Dan Ricker from Rasa, would probably be the best person to bring in. I was thinking about Dan was actually the guy. Yeah. I just talked to him the other day. He he really identifies, and understands. He he knows that the feeding schedules, hydration rates. There's so many, there's so many elements. Like once you get it, you don't just like start driving a Lamborghini when you get your driver's license, right? So sourdough is kind of like driving a Lamborghini. Um, well, it really is. And it, well, it's, it's, most, it's getting a lot of traction right now because, you know, it is, it's the hot, sexy new thing too. Everybody wants a Lamborghini. Well, you can't buy Not everybody can just, just uh, go from, <laughs> go from their Ford Escort to a Lamborghini, you know? Right. <laughs> My Honda Civic isn't doing, isn't cutting it. So I'm just going to go ahead and spend a quarter.
quarter million dollars on the land. Well, I'm going to try to get Dan to join us for that next session because I think he, you're right. He's the he's the perfect guy for that. If, if we're yeah, if we're going to get into that subject, we need somebody who really knows what they're talking about. And there's a lot of people in the industry who utilize this technique who don't know what they're talking about. And they, yeah, me really. Yeah, I think I think Brian hit on something again with with this too is that you know, if you have a Lamborghini but you don't really know how to drive, it ain't doing you any good. Yeah. You know, people think they're gonna they're gonna catch latch on to the next big thing, and that's gonna get them to where they want to be. But you have to really understand why you're doing it. It's not just a buzz buzz phrase. It's a it's a technique. It's a tool. You see, I always thought that that pizza talk was really just a, a the a stepchild of car talk with click and clack. And you have taken us now into car talk ter territory <laughs> with the Lamborghinis. And, and so so let's what let's 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 call it a day today. But I'm gonna let's pick it up again. And Brian, you have one final. Uh, I know you got to say you got a getaway line here. You know what I just what, what John just remind me. Like, like every, you know, uh, everything has a means to an end. But what is the end? Um, what are we really trying to achieve? And do you know how to achieve it with your means? And this is where like you, we if we're gonna go we're gonna go down that rabbit hole. Um, yeah. It's yeah. Well, the thing about that I see happening in, in natural leaven and natural fermentation uh, pizzerias, a lot of people are coming into it the way that a lot of bread makers and pizza makers got into into it, even with yeast, is is doing it by failing a lot and trying a lot of things and just learning as they go, uh, right. and then the knowledge sort of comes later. We, we, we'll try see if we can help fast track those folks by bringing in somebody who can bring the functionality and a little bit of the science into it. Uh, as and 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 uh, we'll just keep adding to our knowledge base. So yeah. we've got a lot to build on. We've talked about philosophy. We've talked about mixing techniques. We've talked about yeast and fermentation. Uh, a lot to cover on pizza talk in the it's days to come. <laughs> and 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 it's always about the hands, right, John? Thank you so much, guys. Uh, we'll see you at the next round. Um, I have dough on my hands. You you've been with John Arena, Brian Spangler, and Peter Reinhardt. We're on Pizza Talk presented by Pizza Quest. Join us next time. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Love you. I'll be back, Brian. Beautiful. Right. Thank you, guys. Love you all. Man, this is so much fun. I'm sorry that I'm only on like four hours of sleep, so I'm <clears throat> I'm a little. Well, I can always tell the less sleep you have, the more F-bombs get dropped. <laughs> yeah, that happens. But that's <laughs>